So you're wondering which softbox to get or whether or not it makes a difference at all. I'm going to show you some examples of the mini and the large softbox. I'll explain why they both look different so that you can make a decision of which one is best for you. And I'll show you a couple of different setups using both as well. So this is what a light looks like without any sort of diffusion or softbox. It's called hard light and that's because the shadows are really harsh. Now there's nothing wrong with this, it's a style all in itself and I like it, especially for photography or moody type shots. But softer light can be a little bit more flattering, so that's why it's more favoured in a lot of films or most films. So how do you get softer light? Well you use diffusion or a softbox for example. Now there are loads of different types of diffusion, I've done a video up here showing you the difference between softbox and diffusion and why you'd use one over the other, so it's worth checking that out after this video. Now there are a few things that make the light softer. The brightness, the distance the light source is from the subject, and most importantly, the size. The larger the softbox or the diffusion, the softer the light or the shadows. So you imagine a cloudy day, that's like the biggest diffusion panel or the biggest softbox you can ever get. And then if you imagine a bright sunny day with no clouds, the sun is super bright and really far away. And that's why you'll see the shadows on the ground are really harsh and defined. So for all of the following examples, the light is exactly the same distance away from me, about an arm's reach, and it's also in the same position. So all the examples are a direct comparison. So here's the mini softbox to start with. As you can see, it's a little bit softer, or quite a lot softer, than just having no diffusion at all. And you can also tell that the shadows behind me are a lot smoother and a lot less obvious. It's basically casting a more even spread over the whole scene, rather than that harsh light source. So even just a mini softbox does a great job at softening that light. And here's what the large softbox looks like. As you can see there is quite a lot of difference, especially between no diffusion at all and the softbox. Those shadows on my face are a lot softer and it's a lot more flattering and it's just really nice. And again in the background as you can see the shadows are barely noticeable, they're still there but it's just a lot less distracting. And obviously because it's a little bit larger, it's brighter, that's also bouncing off this wall I've got here and it's filling in some more of my right hand side or the left as you're looking at it. If you wanted to get rid of that you'd have to use a negative fill but you might like that. There's loads to do with lighting. I don't want to delve too deep into that side of things in this video. But let me know if you want to know more about it and if you want a full video. So is the mini softbox good enough for you? Well, it all depends on the application, what you'll be using it for, how you'll be using it. For example, if you're doing YouTube videos like me and you've got a small room, it's great to have just a small softbox setup rather than a massive big thing taking up all your space. There is a difference between the, the mini and the large as you can see, but it's subjective really and you've just got to decide whether or not it's worth it. So have you got the space and the money? If so, go for the larger one if you can. If you like the look, if you're not bothered, then the mini one will do. I mean, you don't have to have any if you like the harsh shadows, but it's a little bit more pleasing and flattering to have a nice soft light, in my opinion. But if you if you don't want to do that, then go for it. Do whatever you want. If you are doing more high-end production stuff, it might be worth going for the larger softbox just to get that extra softness. Before I give you a couple of examples of different ways of setting these things up, let me know which one you're leaning more towards, which one was your favourite, what are you thinking about, if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. So the setup I like to use, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have a little bit of space, I've not got loads of space in this room, but I've got the larger softbox setup, I just, I really like that extra softness. It wouldn't bother me if I used the small one, so I'm, I'm not opposed to it at all, but since I've got one, I may as well use it and I've, I have got the space. So I've got the large softbox setup here, and I've actually got the honeycomb grid on as well because I don't want too much spill, I don't want the light bouncing off all of the walls. I just want it to be on me and the background a little bit darker. Sometimes I will, I will take that grid off because I do like a little bit of brightness, it just depends how I feel. Again, it's up to you. So if you don't know what the honeycomb grid does, it basically directs the light in one place so it's not spilling out the sides, it keeps it more directional. So that's the first one. Large softbox in front of me, 45 degree angle. And then over here, just above me, and on the opposing side of the large softbox, I've got a small softbox, I've got the mini one, also with the grid on, and that's acting as this little rim light here. And what that does, in fact, let me show you. Oops. And what that's doing is it's separating me from the background a little bit. If I turn it off, 
See that? I've, I've got more shadow here. You can see a little bit of shine on my cheek here coming from that light. If I put my hand in front of it, it disappears. I just want a little bit more separation from the background by having this on. The reason why I'm using a mini softbox above me is because I don't want loads of light. I don't want it to spill all over the place. So I'm using a small softbox with the grid on and it's keeping it nice and directional just on me basically. And it's not going everywhere. So that's the nice little addition. I mean, this is not, this looks nice. Sometimes I do like this, but it's a little bit more dramatic than I might want it to be. If I'm telling a story that I want you to focus on me, I might keep it off, but because I want it a little bit brighter, I'm gonna go for that. Now you could also use a mini softbox to fill in this side here. I could use it as a fill light. So now I've got another softbox set up here, just a mini one. And as you can see, the lighting is a lot more flat. It's a lot more balanced. But if you want that depth, it's good to have one main source on this side, a little bit of shadow, then a little bit of rim light. But some people like a lot of brightness and to fill in those shadows a bit more. It just makes the subject a little bit brighter. If you want to know more about lighting and diffusion, check out the videos in this playlist that I've got a link to here. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything that's coming up soon because I've got loads of stuff coming on all sorts of camera gear, drones. It's not a drone, it's a drone battery. This bad boy came the other day. DJI sent me the RC Pro, so I've got to test that out when it's not so windy. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.